Yeah, well, today we had upper zone, and it was, uh, you know, without watching the tape, I thought we had a uh, pretty good – did a pretty good job of getting after it a little bit. Uh, there was some popping going on, which you always like to hear. Uh, you know, the guys that stood out to me today, uh, Tristan Schultz uh, had a really good practice today. Cook McCall had a good practice today. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, these guys coming in, you know, we're replacing Duff and Sam on the right side. So uh, I, I was pleased with what we saw from Brandon Shortler today and Cook McCall. So... And I feel good about our other guys as well. So I think we've got a pretty deep group. Some of these young guys uh, coming on. John Graham's had a really good uh, few days of spring ball that we had and a real good summer. Uh, and he's come out and done some things that are pretty good. Uh, Mason Knight's going to be able to help us this year. Uh, Jacob Biden, who's coming off some foot issues, uh, is moving really, really well. Uh, John Curtis moving really well uh, and, and, and then we'll see uh, where it goes from there. You mentioned Jonathan Graham and he was a guy who played both tackles last year on both sides as kind of like that sixth guy. Where do you see him fitting in this year well, with this group? We've moved him down to guard uh, and he's made a tremendous difference there. Uh, he's just so big and can move so well. He's a hitter. He moves people. Uh, and then uh, he, he still gets a few tackle reps here and there just in case we have something happen. You know, so uh, that's what we're, you know, sitting this. But he's done a really good job for us. Picked up on everything really good. Uh, and, and, man, he's pushing those guys in front of him. Coach, how about uh, uh, Matthews, uh, Bryce Matthews from Ole Miss, the transfer? Uh, how has he looked and where do you see him fitting in? Well, he's definitely going to be in this tackle rotation we have. I mean, he's a good football player. I mean, he is a good football player. You know, he moves pretty good. He's super smart. And, uh, you know, I see him as a guy moving forward that's going to challenge for a starting spot. Uh, and if that doesn't happen, he's going to be able to play. I would say he could play every position on the front, you know, with no problem. You mentioned Tristan. Uh, what's his growth been uh, now heading, entering his second year at left tackle? It seems like his footwork and his uh, handwork getting getting better now. It is. I think the thing's helping the most. He's probably put on 10 pounds. Uh, he's up. He's over 300 pounds now. And, and I mean, he just moves different than, than most of our guys. You know, he's really athletic, uh, can transition. Uh, Pretty good pass protector, comes off the ball, good run blocker. And I see him being, you know, one of our better guys and a leader moving forward. Coach, where do you like to be with your O-line numbers heading into a season or maybe at this part of, of preseason, um, just in terms of number of guys that you can trust to go out there and be able to play? Uh, well, guys that will probably travel with us this year, we'll, we'll probably take 12 guys with us that can help, you know, that are – anywhere from helping on special teams to being in the game and getting us going, you know. But, you know, we're always trying to get 15 guys ready. You know, we, we've got a, a group of ones and twos, and we're, we've got these young guys that we signed that's in this three group that that, that, that we're trying to push and, and, and get them ready to be the next guys up. What's the Coach, season top, going? Your top five. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. Sorry. Uh, once the season gets going, just as kind of a follow up for that, what's what's a realistic expectation for uh, the number of guys that you can have out there that can really go out and contribute and trust? To, to we'll take to twelve. Top, top twelve. We'll take twelve. Yes, sir. Okay. Coach, you got you know maybe your five, five top five, six, maybe seven guys, kind of you know solidified probably at least from an outsider's perspective and some guys that have some experience there how are you at looking to get to that next 12 how's that next group of four or five guys developing and and what are some who are some guys that are standing out there well some guys that are trying to get into that 12 that are trying to help us this year you know i think ryan eshelman who's a guy that we've moved from tight end out to tackle who's i'm telling you man uh, done such a 
a great job changing his body. He's getting strong. He's a strong kid. He's a big kid, and he's trying to get to where he can help us, you know. And 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 I'm telling you, if we played the game right now, he would probably be one of those guys that helped us. Uh, you know, I, I want to see a lot from Jacob Biden. You know, he's a guy that's that's been here. He's a big old boy. He's a, he's a he's a smart football player, and and he's just got to kind of push forward. And I think John Graham's in that same boat. You know, a guys that are just right there nipping at it. That's got to push themselves into being a great football player. And and, and really, all those guys in that class, when you think about it. Uh, Brendan and and all those guys that are in that class, they got to come on. And uh, we've lost some good football players here up front, and they got to come on and 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 they got to pick up that slack and and keep on pulling. You mentioned having to replace two key pieces on the right end, but how good does it feel to have three seniors and Tristan, Damian, and Tom uh, there from left tackle to center to kind of lead the group this year? Well, man, anytime you can get good seniors, man, we really do, man. Our senior group, we've got five guys now that are that are great guys that are leaders all the way. You know, Mason Knight and Bryce are in that group with them, and and we, we it is unbelievable to have guys that can set the example uh, of how we're going to act at practice, away from practice. You know those type of things, and 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 they're they're you can't put a value on that. There's no value, especially as a new coaching staff coming in. There's no value that you can put on that. Where's the versatility at right now in terms of guys that can play multiple spots, or do you like to to just have guys maybe focus on one thing? Uh, well, we're gonna get the best five players out there. So whatever that takes, and, you know, sometimes we have to be pretty creative. But we do have guys that can play guard. We've got guys that can play tackle, and we've got a few guys, I think, that can play both if needed. You know, you know, we just we mentioned Bryce earlier. I think he can do anything. I think Brendan Schlittler could bump out to tackle. I know John Graham could bump out to tackle if we needed that. Uh, and, and, you know, I, you know, I think we're – I feel really good uh, – you know, we lost two really good football players, but I feel really good where we're at uh, chemistry-wise and uh, talent-wise right now. Is there any change or difference, I guess, for an O-line when, when, the, when you're protecting someone different back there, you know, with Buckshot leaving after being here for four years? Uh, is there something that has to kind of develop there between the O-line and the quarterback? Well, I don't – I think it's going to be a lot easier. <laughs> You know, Buckshot could do a lot of things, man. He was an awesome player, but he wasn't uh, he wasn't really dynamic. He won he won games with his arms and, and with his brain and, and where Malik is, you know, he's just a smart kid. I mean, he's an awesome kid. And and the, both of these guys we got in here right now are a lot uh, a lot more versatile in the pocket than uh, what we what we dealt with last year. So uh, I feel it's a lot easier. You know, we've got some running backs that's come in, and, and, and we've really uh, spent a lot of time on protections this spring and summer. So I I, I feel really good where we're at. You know, Malik, Malik does make it easier um, when you don't have to. You know, he'll make two or three guys miss and then keep running. So that's always good. Coach, you mentioned uh, Cooper McCall earlier. Uh, where do you think he is in his progression? I know he's looking to take a big step up in his role this year and possibly start there right back. Well, uh, he is a he is a good football player. He was a good football player last year, but now he's put on about twenty five pounds, and I, I I I expect super things from him. You know. He, he came in and helped in a few spots last year with some things. Probably should have played him more. That was stupid by me. Uh, but I, I can see him just taking off. He, I'm telling you now, he has, he did some fine things today, uh, and he'll do he'll keep on doing because, you know, he, he's got some reps and some things, and he understands. But now that he's got this weight and he can still move really well, uh, I, I expect nothing but big things from him. Is it nice to keep the continuity at center with Tom Sargent? It is, man. And he's – I'm telling you, man, I love that kid. He he comes to work every day. He doesn't have everything that some of our other guys have. But I tell you what, 
Uh, I've tried to beat him out two years in a row, and it ain't going to happen again probably. So, uh, you know, he's a tough kid. He's really done a great job this summer, even in, in the uh, – with us being – with whatever we've been doing and, and and man his body's changed man he's lost a lot of fat i mean he looks a lot different uh than he looked just in spring ball and uh you know i'm i mean he's just solid he's solid he can do everything we ask him to do and i mean he i mean he runs the show without a doubt when i'm not around you you also brought in four true freshmen this year uh, I know for Lyman, a lot of times you like to get him in the program for a couple seasons before we see him on the field. But what have you seen out of them so far in camp? Well, two guys we had this spring, Gage Basham and Will Buchanan, and I, I'm really excited about all of them. We got Brian Hannibal and Chase Mitchell this summer, and, uh, you know, I think it's a really good class. Uh, you know, I'm really excited about them. You know, uh, we've moved Gage kind of into a center role uh, to snap the ball, which I think he fits really well there with his mentality, his football sense. Uh, Chase Mitchell is just a smasher. And Brian's a great athlete. And, uh, you know, he he's really smart football-wise. I think as soon as he gets his weight right, uh, has got a little time with Dom and does a little change into his body. I, I could see really, really big things for him. And then Will Buchanan's a solid kid, man. He gets better every day. And it's hard to find a kid his size that can play tackle, you know, at our level. And I'm really excited about what we got. You know, he'll come off the rock, he'll strike you. And, and that's one thing all them boys will do, you know, which is – you know, it's important to me and, and how we want to coach them and what we want to put out there on the field on Saturday. And I think we've we've, we've done a pretty good job with those four. You know, Brendan had uh, had last year to learn behind Dante there at right guard. Uh, what have you seen in his progression where he can come in and start for you week one uh, this year? Well, I mean, he's a good player. I mean, there, there's a couple of kids we didn't play last year, and that was just stupid by me. We should have played Coop more. We should have played Brendan more. Uh, they, they were good football players last year, you know, and, uh, you know, that was probably just young coaching and being stupid. But uh, he, I think he's a he's a smasher. You know, he's a leader. Um, he's got to learn. You know, there's some reps he's going to have to take, and he'll mess up from time to time. And it's – you know, the one thing we talked to him about, and, and <clears throat> with a lot of our guys, our main issue is they're so hard on themselves. You know, we try to coach them as hard as we can out there, and we're hard on them. But, I mean, they're harder on themselves. And we got to talk to them about, hey, man, let's move on. We messed up. Let's go to the next play. We, gotta, we can't let it tank us for the rest of the day. And, you know, he's one of those guys that you got to, hey, man, let it go. You know, because it, it really matters to him. Brendan, I mean, it matters to him. And, uh you know, that's, it's always easy to coach guys like that. Bounds had a healthy year last year after the hip injury against uh, Auburn in 2018. And had, did having a full healthy year and then going through the spring and summer workouts allow him to get into a better shape going into his redshirt senior year? I think so. I mean, you know, anytime you can – I mean, I thought he played pretty good coming off. I was real worried about to start the year, but, I mean, he came off, and I thought he had zero issues, you know. Uh, did a great job moving people last fall, even when we played some of those better schools. And, you know, he's a little undersized, but a lot of times you wouldn't know he's a really good athlete. He can move well. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a guy that's trying to learn how to be a leader, do things the right way all the time. And, and, and I'm really pleased. You know, it's great to have – it's great to have him, man. And uh, but he had a, he had a really really nice practice today, you know. So you've mentioned the word leader quite a bit, and when you lose a guy like Dante Duff, who was a multi-time captain and was really the leader of that room, and the way he worked and the example he set, who are guys, or is there is there one guy or multiple guys who's uh, really stepped up and tried to find a way to be that leader, be that voice in that room? Well, one thing you know, and, and it's hard to replace Dante. You know, what an unbelievable kid he was. What a, he was a good football player. You know, you knew right when he was done playing what type of person he was going to be. I mean, he's going to be somebody that's going to be successful, you know. And, and uh, you know, we've got guys now that maybe have a little bit different personality from Dante, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
And uh, I, I think, I think, I really think we'll be fine. Now we're more uh, leadership by committee. You know, we've got guys in there. We've got a lot of seniors that are that know what they want, and uh, they know what it's going to take for these guys. They know what they want these other guys to do around them to make sure we get what we want. And uh, you know, I, I think we've got a lot of guys that'll that'll just speak up and get it. You know, and, and they're setting the example every day. But I think it's Tom Sargent. You know, if we had to call a guy right now, he's handling – he handles business on a daily basis. When you got here prior to the 2019 season, how different is the offensive line room in terms of depth and adding the type of athletes that you guys need to compete at this level in terms of the competition and uh, what you guys need to be out there on a weekly basis? Well, Stein has done a good job. You know, this this red shirt class with Brendan Schlitter and them are really good players. And, uh, you know, I like what we've added thus far. You know, uh, you know we've got some holes in Coop McCall's class that we're going to have to get filled this, this uh, fall. But I think we're doing a really good job of where we're at with our commitments and uh, some other things. So, uh, you know, I like, I like where we're at recruiting right now for sure. All right, guys, anything else? I was going to ask about Mason Knight. Uh, How is he coming along? He's a guy who was a pretty high recruit when he came in. We didn't really hear about him a lot last year. But as a senior, what have you seen in his progression to where he can be one of those guys who's in the too deep rotation? Yeah, well, when Mason got here, um, he had some shoulder issues we had to work through and get handled. And, and, and you know, when it happens and he's coming in like that, maybe he missed out on some reps and, and, and was a little slower coming on than a few others. But, man, he's he's ready to go. And, I'm, I'm, I mean, he's, he's rolling with the twos right now. I'm ready to see what he can do when he's had a whole year. And, I mean, he's ready and he wants it. And, uh, you know, he's one of those kids that we were talking about earlier. I had to pull him aside today and just say, hey, man, calm down. You messed up. I mean, it won't be the last time. You're going, let's play. Let's go. Let's go have some fun and and, and let's we'll fix it in the meeting room. And uh, it means a lot to him. And I, and I tell you, I want it for him. I want it to go good for him. And uh, I think he's one of the guys that we'll see that will bring something to the table for us this year.